So do you believe that flirting helps with like progressing? Everything. Flirting helps with everything. It's so much easier to be with somebody you think likes you. So um, you might be quite nervous about how you perceived yourself to be with that person, but that person's going to be much better with you if they feel you like them. So give them all the signs you like them with like you've got a lovely smile going on there, you've got good eye contact, you've got good facial gestures. Give all that stuff back to people and it makes it very easy for them to, to talk to you and to approach you. Just look welcoming and engaging. So if you give more, you're going to get more. Yes. You only get what you put into life back out again. So don't so sit in a corner and expect someone to come to you. Go to them. I say if you're nervous about speaking to people, use the whole eye contact, eyebrow flash, smile. Um, let them know you're interested and break the ice that way. It's much harder to just march up to someone and say hi than it is to do all the nonverbal stuff first. And it gives you that bit of confidence that they've reciprocated it and it makes it much easier. And who inspired you when you were 18? <sighs> Looking back, oh, it was a very <laughs> long time ago. Um, nobody really. I just, I just wanted to. I was brought up in Scotland in a really um, rural place, and I just wanted to get out and and try things. And because so I went to uh, Newcastle Poly. Um, I had a fantastic time doing mechanical engineering. It was great. Um, and you just take those experiences as they come. I don't really have anyone that I kind of look up to or aspire to be. I just want to be the best version of me. And um, you also now a mentor with the Manchester Tech Trust. So it is, what is the number one piece of advice that you would give to the business student? Ask. You know, shy Ben's getting out is a, is a very good Geordie saying. Um, if you want help with something, ask. I, I'm, I mentor mainly females because women have a completely different mindset towards entrepreneurship and building businesses. And I think it helps to have that from another woman. Um, and there's, there's things that you come up against that men don't. So it's, it's nice to have someone that you, say, you can talk about those things with. There's lots of organizations out there that do mentoring. So find one, approach them, have a chat with them, find someone you're comfortable with. Um, and don't leave it all to the person that's mentoring you to do the work. You want the mentoring, you push them. Exactly. And um, what was the biggest challenge you faced um, setting up your own company, Dream Agility? I think one of the biggest things was finding I was pregnant. Um, and people say, what, what advice would you give female entrepreneurs? Remember to take your contraceptives. Um, because I, before I knew it, I just signed a contract that was worth about a quarter of a million quid, and I was like, seriously up the duff. I had to deliver the project the day after. Um, no, the baby was due on the 25th. And the project had to be delivered by the 24th of December. So it was very challenging. And then afterwards, the breastfeeding was really hard. He wasn't very well. And he had to be exclusively breastfed. So, but it meant I was awake all the time, which meant I could do lots of work. So I'd be feeding the baby and working on my phone like this or my laptop like that. So it made me very productive and used to not getting a lot of sleep. So I got a lot done. So you still didn't give up even, even that, like you've still been working? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a week off maternity leave, and the week I had off for maternity leave, the baby wasn't very well, so he was in hospital all that week. So it was a bit of a wasted week off. And then just back at it. My kids all work in the business. I've got a 24-year-old, 22-year-old, and a 5-year-old. Uh, the two eldest ones are employed full-time. The 5-year-old is going to take over the business when mummy dies. Um, I said, I, you know, I think your brother and sister might want to take over the business. He's like, no, they'll be really old by then, mummy. I'll do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, don't just do things in a conventional way. You don't have to follow conventional paths. If you find your own thing and it works for you, just do that. And also you won FDM Every Woman in Technology Award for Best Startup of the Year. But STEM industries are still very male dominated. How do you think what universities and schools can do to encourage more girls into them? I don't think it's the girls that need encouraging. I think it's the mums and the dads. Um, I think people are very intimidated by the idea of coding. So what we're doing is working with the mums and dads because there's nothing worse. Kid comes home and says, Mom, I want to do computer science. Mum's got no idea what computer science is. And she goes, oh... Uh, and that reaction, that split second reaction is enough for the, the kid to think, this is a rubbish thing to do. I want to be a hairdresser, but oh, that's a good idea, pet. You know, it's that sort of thing. How a parent reacts to a child's ambition is really important. And if the parents understand what coding is, then it makes life a lot easier. And there's lots and lots and lots of um, programs out there like Scratch and things like that where a parent can get up to speed themselves with what coding is and, and, and just so they don't feel left behind. You know, we're in an environment now where uh, everyone's job is going to change over the next five years. I wouldn't want to be a lawyer or a doctor because I think that's going to be torn apart by AI. Um, so you've got to be prepared to change and to see things differently and to be relevant. So I think we need to work more on the parents than we do on the girls because I think the girls would be up for it if the parents were up for it. So drag the parents into the workplace, into the universities, 
talk to the parents about code, get them going home, playing with their kids with building code projects, and I think we'll see a big change in the uptake in the STEM sciences. So do you think your children are into science industry because of you? Because yeah, of pretty much. Uh, I, I, I very much pushed them that way because I thought, well, even if they want to do anything else, um, if they've gone that route, then they've got options. If they don't go that route, it's going to be very difficult to get into it. Um, I know I'm not a coder and I run a technology business, but um, I can tell when people are lying. So half the thing is about knowing about what you actually want to do um, and the problem, defining a problem. So if you can define a problem, you can get anyone to build it for you. And, and then if I can tell if someone's lying, so I know if they've not done what I've asked them to or they've not done it properly. So I don't need to ha how to code. I just need to know how to read people to be able to get through the results. <laughs> That's the best skill, I think. <laughs> and what's next for you? Oof, um, a bit of world domination, I think. We'd like to move the business to the States. We've just opened an office in Korea uh, at the end of last year. So uh, we want to be moving a bit further afield, moving into the markets that um, are underdeveloped at the moment. There's a, a, a lot of opportunity in APAC, out in China, in Korea, in Japan, around that area in Australia. Um, so I think that's where we're probably going to end up. We're keeping fingers crossed for you. That's amazing.